Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. Welcome to Chapter 8, Part 8. We are halfway through this dungeon crawl. I told you, we should have hired a thief. We are thieves, you fool. We're stealing the cube. <laughs> and yet none of us can... If you remember, we are down in the bowels of a Vonchenzel. Damn block. So far, really, what we've been contending with are dwarven constructs and traps, which are very deadly. This does not seem to be a location that's been infested with Falmer at this point. I haven't seen any Falmer, so it's pretty much been, you know, spheres and spiders and traps at this point. And we are picking our way through here very carefully. As I mentioned in the last episode, we may have the stealth lightfoot perk, but we are not immune to any of the traps in this Dwemer ruin. So there are some that I'm willing to, you know, try to work around. But depending on the type, um, there's some areas that I may skip entirely if it looks like it's too dangerous. And uh, the ones that I, that I worry about the most are the big spinning blades. So you never know when you're going to hit those. And they are nasty. One swipe uh, with Fleet's health score and uh, he would be done. So we're going to exercise plenty of caution here. Okay. It's a pretty large room. I'm going to try to stay in the dark, in the dark places. Stay out of the light as much as we can. You can hear the spiders in the next chamber. It is large indeed. I did not anticipate a bunch of cells size or the time needed to uncover the entrance. A few hours sleep and we should be ready to continue through. Maybe we should turn back. I don't want to sleep here. Drennan, you do understand that the lexicon at the bottom of this place holds the accumulated memories of centuries of Dwemer. Not to mention our pay. So? So we're not turning back, you fool. Besides, you're not scared of a few sleeping metal men, are you, Drennan? Sounds to me like Drennan is the smartest one in the group, actually. So now we understand what this lexicon is. Somehow they, the Dwemer managed to create a device that holds the accumulated memories of some Dwemer. How they were able to create a device that would capture and hold memory is pretty amazing. Gives us some idea of what these cubes are all about, how powerful they really are. Okay, I'm going to cast a light spell in here. It's just too freaking dark, and I don't know what's here. And right now, I'm really glad I did. Look at that. So, that's a blade trap right there, and there's no way that I could open that door and be out of range of those blades. I would be stuck in a blender. I'm going to skip that door. If I had maybe a little bit better armor or had a little bit higher health score, I might risk it, but... I am not so hard up for treasure that I need to risk that. Besides, where Fleet's concerned, uh, he believes that he was sent down here for a specific reason. Uh, any treasure or loot he finds along the way is just kind of a bonus, but it's not the primary reason he's here. He has yet to discover what that is. Returning the lexicon is one thing that seems to be important. So since he has the lexicon, he's going to go ahead and return it and then see where this leads. Okay, there's the spider that we were hearing from the other chamber. I'm just going to reposition real quick. Hmm. 
More often than not, when I shoot those things, it sends my arrow flying straight back at me. They explode with a lot of force, so makes the archery a must in this case. Here's an alchemy lab. Got a few gems. So this might be a good time to talk just briefly about the last episode and Fleet's rejection of the Nightingales. There has been some conversation in the YouTube thread about that already. And uh, one of the things that came up was just this idea of, you know, does Fleet believe in the gods? Um, sure. He believes they exist. But I think that uh, he regards both the Aedra and the Daedra with something like contempt. Um, essentially, if, if you subscribe to the creation myth, there are lots of variations on the creation myth, but one thing that most of them have in common is this idea that the, the Aedra were, and the Daedra, were created technically by Sithis, because Sithis is an agent of change, and Anu represented perfect stasis, which means no change. Whereas Padme, also known as Sithis, represented change and chaos. And according to the creation myths, here we got a guy down here. Something down here. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, that was a nice long one. Nice long shot. So if you if you subscribe to the creation myths, uh, essentially... What it all boils down to is none of the creation that that we know of as Mundus, this plane that men and myrrh live on, would exist without Padme. Likewise, the plains of Oblivion, where the Daedra live, would not exist either. And uh, the Daedra and the Aedra were both created by and because of this battle between Anu and Sithis, and it was the mingling of the blood of Sithis and Anu that created the Daedra. So, really, as far as that, as far as the gods go, Fleet believes they exist. He does not believe they are gods. He believes they are entities that were created by the one all-powerful God being Sithis, and the only difference between himself and them is that they are more powerful, just innately more powerful. Um, so that's not to say that he's being arrogant and putting himself on a plane with gods. He just doesn't believe they're gods. He believes they're entities like he is. They're just different. And so for him... In particular, the, uh, the Daedra, because the Daedra are still uh, technically independent and able to access Mundus, able to come to this plane, they tend to mess around in people's affairs, they tend to manipulate people, they tend to try to portray themselves as gods and play with people. And Fleet would view that as disgusting. So, for him, the Daedra are kind of entities to be loathed, if you will, and certainly not partnered with in the spiritual sense. Because in, in Fleet's mind, the Aedra are basically, are basically impotent, right? They're, they have really no real significant power on Mundus. They can't they can't manifest themselves physically on Mundus. And the Daedra are basically, in his mind, infantile. They can manifest themselves on Mundus, but when they do, it's really 
you know, it's it's all about kind of screwing with people and stuff like that. He sees, you know, their schemes and machinations, generally speaking, as as being, I don't know. Um, I thought you said these things were. Sleeping. I guess useless in some ways. No, of course. The Daedra are, you know, completely different beings, uh, different culture, different thought processes, different ways of living, considerable power from a different plane, right? So I'm sure what a Daedra uh, views of, of their schemes is a completely different thing than what, what Fleet does. But that's kind of his his take on the Aedra and Daedra, and I, I guess if we were going to describe it in long terms. Uh, so... When it, when it comes down to Nocturnal, he doesn't necessarily have an objection to forming a business partnership with a Daedric Prince. However, in his mind, a business partnership does not include giving up your soul. As soon as you gl- give up your soul, there's something, there's something larger there. Then it becomes more of a more of a religious type of thing in his mind. And... Uh, he would stay away from that completely. He's dedicated himself to Sithis, and he believes that Sithis is the one true power. He doesn't believe that Adra or Daedra are gods. He thinks they proclaim themselves as gods, and uh, that would be his view. So. so he had to walk away. Now, that's not to say that he won't end up in the end continuing that quest line, but there may be another way to do it. With mods, with console commands, and some storytelling, I may be able to allow Fleet, in the long term, to complete that quest without having a situation where he would do something that, you know, is absolutely against his principles, which is to ally himself in that way with the Daedric Prince. It just wouldn't happen. So, there we go. And in that clip, when he left, he dropped everything he had on the ground. Every piece of night, Nightingale armor and also the Nightingale blade he dropped on the ground at their feet and walked away. So, he has not retained any of those items. Um, so, just to be clear on that, all the armor and all the weapons, anything with Nightingale associated with it, he left behind. with Carlia and Brynjolf. Okay, we took care of a whole bunch of spiders in here. Got a couple centurions, which always have good loot. So we're going to grab a lot of this stuff. All the soul gems. I've been grabbing a lot of dwarven oil. You may have noticed that. Um, I can create some actually, you know, very valuable potions by combining, uh, you know, something like dwarven oil with a taproot, for example. You get some very powerful uh, potions that are uh, great to sell and just make lots of money. So I'm snatching up the Dwarven Oil whenever I can get it. Dwemer Ruins can be very challenging, um, but you're almost guaranteed to walk out rich. <laughs> if you do it right, if you look at everything, you could easily walk out of a out of, out of a Dwemer Ruin with you know twice as much loot as you had going in. Um, it just depends on how thorough you want to be. I generally don't bother with any of the struts or dwarven metal or anything like that. Um, it's really heavy, and generally I never make anything with it, but that would be an option if, if I really wanted to. I mean, it's just it's free. I can, I can smelt it down into ingots, and I could make things with it and at least gain some smithing levels. But at this point, I'm taking the stuff that's light, the stuff that's valuable, and uh, working my way through as quickly as I can. Nothing if we die in here. Calm yourself, Freya. We are closing in on the Lex 
All right, according to these spirits, we're getting close. The whole spirit thing in here is actually very interesting because the woman that we got the lexicon from, she was a female Argonian, presumably the female Argonian in this party of, of travelers. So why we're seeing her spirit, um, I'm not sure. It would be interesting to get some sort of explanation as to what's going on there. Right now, I can only speculate. It's clear when you meet her on the docks in Riften that she has lost her mind, that what she went through down here caused her to really kind of go crazy. Maybe there's something associated with that. Maybe the spirit of her that we see here is is sort of representative of her her intellect being left behind and she being, you know, cast into the world as nothing more than a shell of what she used to be. I don't know. That's just me riffing on an idea. If you like that idea, Bethesda, give me a call. We'll write it down. So if you're interested in the creation myth and haven't done a lot of reading up on lore and stuff like that um, I would recommend the children's Inuit the children's Inuit is a, a children's book that explains the creation myth uh, and it does it in in very very simple terms that's a good place to start and there's all kinds of great books on the creation myth on the Adra and the Daedra and all that stuff but that's a good one to start with and it's um, available here in Skyrim as part of the vanilla game so Okay, we got an enemy around here somewhere, and I don't know where he is. Oh, hey, hey. All right, let's bolt. Okay. All right, we got to lead this guy down here. we got to make a strategy. He is on to us big time, so there's no getting out of this. Let's let him come. I'm going to keep this pillar between him and I. We're going to play a little cat and mouse here. Oh, hey, whoa. Oh, he's kind of quick. Okay. We just need a shot or two. There's one. Come on now. One more. Ah, that was close. I think I, that's actually the first enemy in here that spotted us. So we've been making, making good use of the stealth up to this point, so was kind of a mistake. I, I got a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit too confident there. But we survived. That is what counts. Survival. See, look at all this stuff. There's a lot of these uh, Dwemer parts. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, there's a lot of these Dwemer parts that can be used for other things. So some of this stuff, uh, struts and levers and those kinds of things. Some of that, if you grab it, you can go to a, a smelter and actually melt it down into dwarven metal ingots that you can use to make other th other things. Um, I do it very rarely just because I'm not a huge fan of Dwemer armor, so I seldom wear it, so I don't usually have occasion to make it. Wait. Oh, that didn't sound good. potions. See, here's a whole bunch of ingots just laying around. Aha, uh -huh. this looks like something I should be able to open. I'll take a quick look around, but if it's not obvious, I'm probably going to bypass that as well. In situations like this, I'm constantly reminding myself of not only, you know, what would Fleet do in this situation, but, you know, <laughs> what makes for good viewing. And, uh, you know, I suppose me crawling around looking for a lever or a switch somewhere for ten minutes is probably not, probably not too entertaining for you all. And I am here to entertain and tell stories, so... I think I'm going to let it go. I can't really see anything in there. You must be able to go under those pipes once you get in there. Oh, 
All right. Something bad happened when they passed through this doorway, so we're going to go in expecting trouble. I don't see traps here. Ah, but this is a classic one right here. There's the blades I was talking about. And plungers that push you into the blades. How nice. So we're going to follow the blade down. We're going to take a little break in the middle between a couple of these pistons. Let the blade pass again and then finish our trip. All right. It actually moves pretty fast. Those blades have a long reach, so we got to move fast now. There we go. Yep, we got another victim here. All right, let's just turn this thing off. That is nasty. Okay, I think we're nearing the end here. Let's put one down here, see if anything's lively. No. Okay, let's go around behind here. Stay in the dark, stay to the edges. There's another body. Oh, and a centurion. One left. Let's take him out. Finish him quick. That is effective. Two shots from stealth, and we dropped him. Master difficulty, level 33. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, we're going to loot these Centurions. More good stuff. Lots of gems. Look at that. Soul gems. Big soul gems, too. And uh, usually have good arrows, too. Usually you can expect to at least get some, get some ebony, which is great. Now we do what we came here for. Fleet's Journal. As I placed the lexicon atop the pillar, the air in the room seemed to vibrate. I could feel my body warm and there was a sensation of pressure all around me. I closed my eyes and could feel the current of the magic passing through me. As if a bubble burst, the pressure suddenly relaxed and my mind opened. The feeling was strange. I knew that I was different. But how? What was this, and how would it manifest in my life? Why would Sithis want me here? I resolved to not question, and knew that all would be revealed in time. Okay, we've got one more area to clear here, I think. There's a spider coming down here. I think I'll switch back to the bow. How far down he's going to come. Oh, there he goes. Very good. Clearing him out. Oh, there's a sphere in the other room. Just knock them right apart. A little bit more oil. We'll take that. 
Okay, now, I'm not sure which way to go here. I think that this door here by the sphere is a door to that main chamber, that great big chamber that had about four different paths through it. So I think that would take us back the way we came. I'm going to go up the ramp and have a look just to confirm that. And then we will know for sure where we're at. I reached the balcony at the top of a Von Chanzel. From this point, I could see down into the depths of the great chamber, and the wonders of the Dwemer overwhelmed me. The sense of loss was palpable. Such a proud race. The scale and sophistication of their work was staggering. And to have simply vanished into Aetherius, lost to time, as I marveled at the chamber, I looked down and saw before me a skeleton. Gray, brittle bones hung precariously over the edge of the balcony, and lying beside the body were all that remained of his possessions. Two swords of a quality I have never seen before. They were ancient, and while completely different in style, they seemed to fit together. The first was tarnished with age, but solid and well-balanced. Its dark stained blade was razor sharp, but had the feel of a hammer resting in my palm. The other was bright and slender. Light and quick, the fine features of the blade felt delicate and deadly. Both swords were expertly crafted and rested in ancient wooden sheaths. The lighter blade was adorned, the heavy was not. Is this why I was here? How was I able to expertly appraise these blades? I had never seen their like before. I picked up the blades and made for the door. This was truly a wondrous gift. Well, we've done it, brothers and sisters. We have survived a Vanchen Cell. Fleet has learned a number of very important things on this little side quest. One is that the headaches that he's experiencing have something to do with messages. Messages coming to him through his mind from what he believes is Sithis. And that somehow his sight, his sight through his dead eye, is in some way associated with these headaches, as he was able to find relief after meditating and removing his eye patch, as if he were meant to see something and the eye patch were blocking his ability to see. So that is a revelation for him. Also, we've acquired ancient knowledge, which is a perk that we get by returning the lexicon, which gives us bonuses on smithing, and two new and interesting swords. I will explain these swords in more detail in coming episodes. Uh, but they are not part of the vanilla Skyrim quest line. So I want to thank you all for taking the journey with me. And until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, and deadly. And to all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe.
For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.